Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Tech Bytes with Keshav. Today we will discuss about loose coupling in coding, a very primary concept as part of class design and also as a part of writing a clean and a optimized code. So let's get started. As we can see, we have a function named getStudent that will accept a, a integer parameter called roll number and it will try to get make an API call and fe fetch the data for corresponding to that roll number. It will pass it and it will return the response. Okay. Now, if you think from a uh, out of the box perspective, so this function actually gets student. Its primary job is to fetch the data for a particular student. Its primary job is not to prepare the URL of it, to prepare the request that will be used. If we somehow think that it will, if ex its execution will start from line number 42 and it only needs its request, HTTP request for its implementation. How about that? It is, it has no botheration or consideration for how are these details formulated. Now keeping that in mind, let's try to exclude this code and let's try to create a function that will return HTTP request that can be used over here. Sounds good. Let's try with that. Now I will comment this code. Now it will expect this request. Okay, I have already have this raw uh, code. I will add it over here. Now, I have added three functions. Get student URL, it will accept roll number and it will further make an internal call to get base URL that will contain a scheme, HTTP scheme like HTTPS, uh, base URL and it will formulate the entire URL as making a, a roll number as part of path parameter. Okay. This function will use base, uh, internally base URL. Okay. Now, as part of uh, get student request, it has to return HTTP request. This will first call get student URL. It will, okay, we have defined this. And then based upon that, we'll create a new request that will include a, uh, that will include an access token, right? It is getting it from this particular function. Okay. So how about if we only call this particular method, which is internally calling this and this to get the required. So if we call this and pass a roll number to this function, I think we will have the data that we need to implement our functionality. So let's try it out. So With this, we can see, with this, we can see that details, those were not required by this function have been excluded from this, right? And then it was only expecting this request so that this function will give it and then it will be uh, pasted over here and then this function can operate on uh, as expected. Now thinking from one step ahead, These, uh, it will be uh, giving us URL, it will be giving base URL, it will be giving student request. All these are as part of the request. Now, for now we can see that, uh, okay, let's add it to the, this, this class only. But as the size of this class will increase, as we will add more functionality to these. 
so we can say that this class will be making a uh, handling business logic now thinking from that perspective ideally this class itself should not, not have these kind of details let's right because it is basically trying will try to implement add more and more functionality so now so on that note let's put these details as part of a separate class now actually we need only the data to process what uh, uh, our request but this kind of data can be come over i've already created this separate class request builder get student url this and then this now keeping this this was an internal this is an internal all these as uh, both of them as internal so now let's make this as public function how about this so now two steps we we thought about two cons considerations one that it 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 uh, it was not required for it this class uh, function to use uh, to know that how is that url formulated how is that request formulated so we segregated at it put it at the last next we thought that this class is trying to implement business functionality which will gradually increase day by day and then this class itself will not need that thing what we say that url and all that so let's put all this stuff in a separate class so now we have put it in a separate class and then it will only use that a call that class object using that class object it will call that function and it will get the required uh data that it needs to make for uh, implement its own functionality right so this way we have achieved loose coupling now same way we can see here we are creating a new ok http request i think we can segregate this also now same thing we can put it over here at the last also over here creating a new function and then adding calling that function and that will give us uh, this object but consider this ok http client will be requ can be uh, required by multiple uh, when we uh, functions so how about putting it into a common uh, class that will have the object uh, object of that uh, means uh, that so that anyone can use that it it will promote function reusability and anyone can use the same piece of code right so instead of putting it over here let's put this piece of code as part of a function and uh, that function should reside in a separate class so that any other class can use it okay let's see that now i have to make it as a public see with this also we promoted loose coupling as well as code reusability now let us say for with the student uh, uh, like client student client class there is there is a teacher client class also so to fetch a teacher also our data right so that will also be needing some uh, this okay http and that will also be having that you uh, are urls get a uh, teacher url get a base url you will be needing all this uh, data so better to put all these details which are not required for the function to implement directly those details that will only need its output not the whole complete input and all that processing data so with this we can follow this approach that will ensure loose complete coupling code reusability and at last what we discussed in our earlier video clean writing clean and an optimized code
I hope you liked this video. So that's all, uh, all for this video. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe for the more content like this. Thank you for watching.